Hey guys, so I woke up this morning and decided to get straight to work. So I opened up my WordPress editor and got started on a top five affiliate article. And as I was doing it, I thought it might be a good opportunity to go ahead and do a screen recording of me actually making the template for my um, top five article. So that's what I did. And um, I, it ended up actually being much longer than I planned. But anyways, here it is. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you guys uh, pretty much how I lay out a top five affiliate post. So we'll go to straight to the WordPress editor and I'm just going to make up something for today. Let me see. How about uh, best basketballs for for beginners. Okay, that's always good. Best basketballs for beginners. And hmm, that says it has zero search volume. two results with only title, so wow. Maybe this is actually a low search volume topic. Anyways, back to the article. Best basketballs for beginners. Let me just capitalize these because I'm OCD about stuff like that. Okay, so now we've got our topic that I didn't research at all, but this is just for an example. Okay, so there's a few things I'll do right off the bat. I will choose the category, and uh, I don't really have one that would be good for an affiliate article like this on this website. Uh, nicheinformer.com, so we'll just leave it uncategorized. Usually I would choose uh, recommendations or something like that. Okay, so next I will immediately go down to Yoast and go ahead and put in my keyword here. Even though this, you know, isn't necessary, you don't have to have an SEO plugin. I do. It just kind of helps keep me on track a little bit. Okay. Now, and this is the way I usually do it. Intro. Basketballs for beginners. So intro here, I will have about 100 to 150 words. It will contain the primary keyword. So that would be best basketballs for beginners. So, um, you know, it'd be something like, uh, everyone has played basketball. When you're a beginner, do you need a certain type of basketball? Well, in, oops, in this article, we'll go over the top five best basketballs for beginners to help you get started. Let's have a look. Okay, so that is obviously not the 100 words, but I just wanted you to get an idea of what I do in this section. So this is actually only 40 words. So you do something like this in this section, uh, just, you know, Make sure you've 
got a little more description about uh, what's to come in the article. Basically, this is only to let the reader know, hey, here's what this article is about, and if you keep reading, here's exactly what you're going to get, and here's how it's going to benefit you if you do so. Okay, so after that section, we move straight into the list. And I will always put the primary keyword right here as the first H2 subheading. Although uh, I may put a modifier on the end or at the beginning or something like that, um, such as here are the top five best basketballs for beginners, something like that. Uh, you can do a different variation of the keyword if you want, like uh, beginner basketballs for noobs, I don't know, something like that. I just usually stick to the exact primary keyword. After that, um, here's where I usually do the top picks table. So I will usually do a top two to three and I will just pick one or two out of the list uh, that I have pre-chosen and it will always be a premium pick and usually a value pick and they always need to be very popular on Amazon and have lots of good reviews. Uh, because I don't want them to go out of stock or uh, become outdated or something like that. They need to still be there available to buy if I don't update this article for a year or more. So that's very important with these top two or three, uh, especially because they're the first ones somebody's going to see. So if somebody doesn't want to read my whole article, then they'll see these, click on it, and just buy from there. So here you'll choose uh, choice one, or actually let's make that a premium choice, value choice. And I'll usually make a nice little table here, um, well, about half the time. Uh, I've been doing it with just HTML and CSS, and then uh, for the image, I'll just get it from Amazon Sitestripe. Uh, in the past, I've used AAWP, and that works too, but since I know HTML and CSS, and it's not a big deal to custom code it, I've just been doing it that way. Okay, so first we will do the first product. So we'll just say product. Uh, because I haven't actually chosen them yet, so I don't know what's going to go there. And this will always be an H3 heading. It will go under this. So the hierarchy is primary keyword is the H2, then all of the H3s are the actual product names. Product name. So under that, we're going to go product image. And I use the AMZ Image Inserter plugin, although it hasn't been updated in like seven months. Uh, it still does work. It is a paid plugin. I think it was like 40 or $50. I use it on all my sites. And I guess once uh, it's no longer supported, uh, maybe I'm screwed and I'm going to have to go through hundreds of articles replacing images. But I'll tackle that problem when and if it happens. Anyways, so yeah, I'll use that plugin to get a nice product image from Amazon. I guess you can get it from the manufacturer or something uh, if you want to go that route. Uh, but I just get it from Amazon. It's quick and easy. Next, I will do the features. And this will be an H4 heading because it goes under the product name, which is an H3. Then I will just do... Uh, four to five um, features here. So we'll say feature one, usually in a bulleted list. Feature two, feature 
three and so on, and I'll go to like five or six in there. Uh, that's a good place to put uh, product specifications, uh, product highlights, and just uh, the main selling points of the product go right here. A lot of people will do pros and cons. I personally don't like that. I don't want to give anyone any cons for my product. I don't want to tell anyone they shouldn't buy it or why they shouldn't buy it. If a product has some big knock on it, I'm probably not going to put it on my list anyway. And if it does have some sort of uh, con, then that does need to be mentioned, I will do it here in the description that is usually about 75 words or so and a couple of paragraphs, maybe two or three paragraphs. Two or three paragraphs. And then after that is our call to action. <clears throat> and that is usually just buy on Amazon. And I will turn this into a link once I have my affiliate link. Once I've chosen my product and have my affiliate link for it, turn that into a link. And I will also uh, make it open in a new tab always. And I usually get a plugin that allows me, it adds a little box here that allows me to no follow it because it's an affiliate link. You I want to be sure no follow them. I think the name of that plugin is, I think it's just no follow. I don't know. It, it, there's a few of them on here on the WordPress plugin repository. I'm sure you can find one. Uh, anyway, so after the call to action, that is it for, for each product little mini review deal. That's how I do it. So then I will just copy this and add it four more times. One, two, three, four. Then I will change the numbers just so it looks like it should. Four and four, okay, I guess that's five. All right, so that's the last one. So now that part of the template is laid out. Next, I will add a little buying guide. So uh, that'll typically be uh, going to look for when buying a basketball. And that will be an H2. Sometimes that might say basketball buying guide or um, how to buy a basketball, something along those lines. This is the buying guide. This this little uh, what to look for buying a basketball is fine. And that's, I think that's usually what I do. Under this, we're going to go back to H3s and we'll have maybe like five. So I'm just going to make these up. I don't really know what you should look for. Um, say basketball material and we'll make that an H3 and then here's your description for that and then we'll do another one um, what else do we look for in basketball about basketball color description and I'll actually probably number these two because I just like to number lists and maybe you don't need to I just do it that way okay so this is what I do in this little buying guide section I'll basically research the main buying points of buying the item or you know based on other articles or other uh, user reviews. Uh, I just gather up about five solid points here, helping people decide what to buy. 
uh, hopefully they've already clicked off of my site before they can get to this point, but this does help for SEO. And after I've done that, put a little horizontal line, and we are at the conclusion. So that's pretty much it. The conclusion is going to pretty much summarize the entire article. We're going to compact it down into about, I don't know, 150 words, maybe 200 or so, somewhere in that range. And the main thing we want to do here is, like I said, just summarize the article. And most importantly, we want to hit again on what our top two to three picks were. So, um, you know, we might say, uh, if you really like leather basketballs, then, you know, product five is the one for you. Here's another link to it. But on the other hand, if you're trying to save money, then product three is the one you're looking for. Here's another link to it. Uh, so you, you get the idea there. And, um, yeah, so that's basically it. So, of course, by the time we got to this point, we would already have our products chosen. But now that we've laid out the template, um, save the draft, I've got this template done. Now I head straight over to Amazon. And, let's see. Oops trackpad. All right, so basketball, and we will start, we would immediately start going through and looking for the highest rated and just generally most popular. And I can see right now that this guy is going to be one of, if not the most popular basketballs. So he's definitely going in the top five. Uh, this one, is that another Wilson? Yeah. Replica game. Okay. But these are two different styles or whatever you want to call it. So both of those are going on. These two Wilsons. Uh, here's a Spalding. He's going on. And this Spalding is also going on. So we're already at four. I mean, seems like I don't put a lot of thought into these choices, but I'm looking at this. I want this fifth star partially filled in, and I would love at least four digits of reviews, so in the thousands. That tells me, yeah, so here's an, I've got a bunch of choices. I could do that one. There's a ton of choices. So I could pick five basketballs in like five seconds, pretty much. And once I have them picked out, I'll go into my H3s, put the product names in, and through SiteStripe, which isn't working right now, I would start adding affiliate links in. Go ahead and start with uh, affiliate link for the titles, affiliate link for the call to actions, and affiliate link for the product image. And I would do that for each and every product before I've done anything else. Once I'm finished with that, I go straight to the intro. That's, like I said, 100 to 150 words, so that takes almost no time. Then I start filling in the products one by one. So I'll go back and forth to Amazon, checking top features for each one. And you want to try to be careful to word it a little bit differently than it is on Amazon. But in the end, the feature and the spec is what it is. And you can't always completely change it. So it's sometimes it's okay to just paste it. For the description, though, you need to be as unique as possible. Uh, you can get that info from the Amazon review as well as the manufacturer's website, as well as your own opinion, especially if you've used the product. And you just go and do that for each of the five. Uh, you put your top two to three here, and those are, like I said, already went over that. Usually the uh, premium choice is the most popular and the highest priced one. 
value choice is the most popular, and that is the lowest priced one. Uh, then we go into the buying guide. Hopefully uh, you will have picked these uh, uh, main feature points here that you're going to hit on. Fill out a little description for each one. Uh, go back to your conclusion. Knock that out. Then do your meta stuff here. Get a meta description in. Make sure you got internal links. Um, that's about it. Set your featured image. Uh, once you think you're done, take another few minutes, go back over everything again. I like to make sure and quadruple check my URL because you want your URL tight. If you mess that up and you accidentally, you know, but for instance, let's say I decide to do this top five best basketballs for a beginner, which is a fine title. There's nothing wrong with that. But when I save it, watch what happens. Now it's in the URL and that's bad. You do not want numbers like this in your URL and you want to keep it as short as possible. So you need to make sure and go back in here and get rid of that part because now you can change it to top six or top 20 or top two or whatever you want. If you have top five in the URL, you're going to have to set up a redirect and it's going to be a pain. Uh, so make sure the URL is good. So I guess that's about it. Uh, that's pretty much how I do a top five affiliate article. Uh, there's nothing really complicated about them. They're just time consuming and uh, they can kind of burn you out. So that's why I usually stick to uh, info articles. So that's it. Thanks for watching.